Hello and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. In this video, we're going to examine one of the most contemporary and widely supported trait theories of personality, the five factor model, also referred to as the big five. The trait approach to personality assumes that behavior is determined by relatively stable traits, which are the fundamental units of one's personality. They are habitual patterns of behavior, thought and emotion. Traits predispose one to act in a certain way regardless of the situation. They remain consistent across situations and over time, but may vary between individuals. Character traits are often shown with descriptive adjectives like patient, jealous or confident. It is presumed that individuals differ in their traits due to genetic differences. Trait theories have long attempted to pin down exactly how many traits exist with a varying range of numbers having been suggested. This includes Gordon Allport's four and a half thousand traits, to Raymond Cattell's 16 personality factors, to Hans Eysenck's three factor theory. The main criticism of these theories has been that they are either too complicated or too limited in scope. Thus, the five dimensions emerged with evidence of this theory beginning with D.W. Fisk in 1949 and growing and being expanded on throughout the years to get us to Costa and McRae's five-factor model we know today. The five-factor theory emerged to describe the essential traits that serve as the building blocks of personality. The five broad personality traits described by the theory are extroversion, agreeableness, openness, conscientiousness and neuroticism. And this model is one of the best accepted and commonly used models for describing personality. Each of the five personality factors represents a spectrum and individuals are ranked on a scale between the two extreme ends. For example, extroversion represents a continuum between extreme extroversion and extreme introversion. Most people lie somewhere in between the two polar ends of each dimension, rather than being classified as one extreme or the other. By ranking individuals on each of these traits, it is possible to effectively measure individual differences in personality. Let's look at each of the five traits in more detail. Openness is the tendency to appreciate new art, ideas, values, feelings and behaviours. This trait features characteristics such as imagination and insight, and those high in this trait also tend to have a broad range of interests. People who are high in this trait tend to be more adventurous and creative. They are open to trying new things and tackling new challenges. People low in this trait are often much more traditional and may struggle with abstract thinking. They dislike change and resist new ideas. Conscientiousness is the tendency to be careful on time for appointments, to follow rules and to be hardworking. Standard features of this dimension include high levels of thoughtfulness with good impulse control and goal-directed behaviours. Individuals high in conscientiousness tend to be organised and mindful of details. They spend time preparing and enjoy having a set schedule. People who are low in this trait tend to dislike structure and schedules, procrastinate and are untidy. Extroversion is characterised by excitability, sociability, talkativeness, assertiveness and high amounts of emotional expressiveness. People who are high in extroversion are outgoing and tend to gain energy in social situations. They enjoy meeting new people and being the centre of attention. People who are low in extroversion or are introverted tend to be more reserved and have to expend energy in social settings. They dislike small talk and being the centre of attention, preferring solitude. This personality dimension includes attributes such as trust, altruism, kindness, affection and other pro-social behaviours. People who are high in agreeableness tend to be more cooperative, while those low in this trait tend to be more competitive and even manipulative. Other characteristics of those high in the trait of agreeableness include feeling empathy and concern for other people, whereas those low in this trait tend to have little interest in the feelings or problems of others. Neuroticism is a trait characterised by sadness, moodiness and emotional instability. Individuals who are high in this trait tend to experience mood swings, anxiety, irritability and sadness. Those low in this trait tend to be more stable and emotionally resilient. 
For some water themed memory boosters, you might find it helpful to use the acronym OCEAN or CANOE when trying to remember the big five traits. Like all other personality theories, the five factor model has limitations. Firstly, it was developed to organise personality traits rather than as a comprehensive theory, and thus it is more descriptive than explanatory and is unable to account for differences between individuals. This also means that it doesn't provide a causal reason for human behaviour. Another limitation is that while the Big Five has been tested in many countries, it has limited cross-cultural validity as there have only been a few studies that have been conducted in illiterate and non-industrialised populations. Furthermore, the findings from these studies have not supported the Big Five model. Lastly, a common criticism of the Big Five is that each trait is too broad. It is argued that more than five traits are required to encompass the entirety of personality and that while the Big Five is useful in terms of providing a rough overview of personality, more specific traits are required for the model to be of use for predicting outcomes. Thanks for listening and if this video has been useful, please like and subscribe for more shorts in psychology.